Rob has told you how great Python is. And so, um, as for my school, they, they teach Python, they don't teach Arduino and C. Um, so the thought was, well, we've got UK Myersbot line followers and wall followers and all that sort of stuff that we're doing. Um, how can we run Python on it? And how can we run Python on it very easily with taking about 10 minutes to do it? So this is what I came up with. So the first thing you do is you knock out your R7 10K resistor on there, which basically stops the battery voltage being fed onto the uh, microprocessor. Um, and we do that because the device we're going to use um, is a 3.3 volt device. Um, you, you could just juggle around with the resistor valid values to put a, a larger divider on it to get it below 3.3, but you're not going to be able to use it anyway, so um, it doesn't matter. So basically, you knock out a resistor, so that takes you about 20 seconds. Then you knock out one pin on the um, pin strip, uh, that the socket that the uh, Arduino normally goes into. Um, and if you've got one already built, then it's a, a quick clip with a, uh, some snips. Um, if you're building one to, to do this, then instead of putting in um, the 15 pin socket alongside where the Arduino goes, um, you put an 11 socket, then you leave a gap of one, and then you put three in. Um, and that sorts that out. And that basically stops the 5 volt output um, from a, a nano or whatever device you've got in there being fed into the PCB. Okay. So now you haven't got any voltage on the device um, to power all the things you want to power. Um, so we solve that um, <clears throat> at the front of the, uh, the mouse. Uh, you basically join the 3.3 and the 5 volt lines together and what that does then is says okay right so everything that's going to come out at 3.3 volts uh, will now feed into what was 5 volts um, and that uh, should make everything work. So what are we going to put in there instead of an Arduino? We're going to put a Citron Maker Nano RP2040 board, uh, which is exactly the same um, pin spacing and size as an Arduino, so there's no need for any um, converter boards or anything like that. It just literally plugs straight in um, where the Arduino uh, goes, um, and they're about seven quid, eight quid, something like that from Pi Hut. So uh, uh, given that um, nanos are going up to um, 10, 15 quid these days um, it's actually a cheap option um, and what you end up with is an RP2040 which is basically um, a Raspberry Pi Pico chip um, sitting on a little board um, plus a load of LEDs on all of the output pins on one side and a couple of RGB LEDs as well um, just so you can make the whole thing flash and whir. Oh, and there's a little sounder on there as well, so you can play tunes as well. Okay, so going down through that, yes. Uh, oh yeah, you get a user button on there. Um, you get two mega flash memory. You get a 264K bit of SRAM. You got 125 megahertz clock speed. Um, so you've got a fair bit of grunt and you've got plenty of um, uh, space for whatever you want to put on there. Um, <clears throat> it'll take a V in of anything between 7 and 32 volts. Um, so you can have as many um, LiPos on there as you like um, and it'll, it'll sort those out. And the 3.3 output on it, unlike the Arduino, which only is a very small amount, um, will actually give you 500 milliamps or thereabouts. Um, so there's enough coming out of the 3.3 to drive your sensor LEDs and your um, <coughs> XOR um, uh, encoder 
converter and, and all the other bits and pieces that, that you need. Um, you've got 22 digital I.O. pins. The only snag with it is you've only got four 12-bit um, ADCs. So you're restricted by um, a couple of things. Um, four ADCs is okay for sensors, for line sensing or for wall sensing. Uh, but what it won't give you is if you use all those four to do that, it won't give you your battery voltage as well. Um, so you have to get around that. Um, as Rob said, there are a couple of buttons on there as well, as well as the user button, which is this one up here. You get a couple of other buttons, and those are to do with um, using when you're booting it up and to, to say which mode you want it to go into. Uh, but normally you don't, once you set the thing up, you don't need to touch those. Okay, if you want to, you can replace the series resistor on your LEDs, um, on your sensor boards, because um, you've been driving them from 3.3 volts instead of 5 volts. Um, but having said that, the ones that we had working from 5 volts seem to work perfectly adequate, um, certainly for line following at 3.3 volts. So we haven't done anything with those that, that we do step on that. Um, the ADC input is 12 bits. Um, so you've got a higher resolution on that anyway. So even if you're getting a bit less light back, you can measure it more accurately than on the Arduino. Um, so that helps to compensate. So what do you do? Right, you plug your board into a USB port on your PC. Okay. Um, when it arrives, it will have a program on it. The, um, the, the Cytron program and it'll play a short tune and it'll light up the blue LEDs in turn um, and then you drive a on a PC which will show you what's in the board storage and it, it comes um, with circuit python and we're going to talk a bit about that in a minute and with circuit python the program that runs is called code.py instead of main.py but that uh, small thing um, if you've got Thony installed on your PC, click on code.py, um, otherwise do what Rob talked about, download Thony, um, and that will give you an environment to, to do some work uh, with the system. Okay, right, so you can now write um, and run Python on your UK Myers bot. Um, and However, um, CircuitPython is not the same as MicroPython and it has, all the I.O. is different and it doesn't really support interrupts properly. Um, so I, under Rob's guidance and just looking around as well, um, decided that uh, your best bet is actually to convert it to standard MicroPython. Um, and to do that, you go to that, L, um, that URL you download the latest version of the UF2 file. Um, <clears throat> you hold the boot button on the RP board um, whilst plugging the board into that. Copy the file across to the mass storage device that appears. Um, and once it's done that, you've now got MicroPython on there instead of CircuitPython. So that gets you to um, the, the basics of, of being able to do what we want to do. Okay, so what's different between the two? Um, <clears throat> these are the main differences. And what I've put down basically is just examples of, of the code um, for doing the various things. So um, for the, um, the includes basically at the top, um, <clears throat> the imports, uh, we would, uh, on MicroPython, we'd, we'd import pin ADC and PWM from um, circuit Python, we'd have digital I/O import, digital out direction pull, and various other things. And and if you look down here, you can see um, this is actually more complicated. Um, and they say um, pretty much non-standard with most normal Python. So this stuff lines up much better with with standard Python um, and the, the micro Python stuff. Uh, but basically, uh, 
if you do want to um, use circuit python and there's nothing to stop you doing that um, then just be aware from the examples that i'll give later um, that all the things to do with io and pwm and um, adcs and all that sort of stuff will all have a different syntax for those commands okay uh, but that is a good summary of pretty much the main changes uh, of what you'll see between the um, the two implementations okay so how we got to map our pins across okay so what I've done here is I've said okay here's here's the Arduino Nano here um, what are the equivalent pins over on the um, RP2040 um, and these basically are GP names and it tells you what functions they do okay so basically if we're going to convert stuff over, um, we have to sort of think, okay, um, if instead of using um, you know, analog on A4, um, then I've got to you know, use a different named field um, on the uh, MicroPython. And, and this is basically sort of a, the mapping between them. Um, so the left side sensor um, A0 would be D26, which equates to one of the analog um, input pins um, on uh, the RP2040. I think um, that might have just reformatted itself incorrectly there by the looks of things. Um, probably something to do with... Yeah, different fonts, something like that. Okay. Um, anyway, so basically, this is the the layout of it. Um, these are the the names of the uh, the pins, um, and these are basically what they can do. And as it says, all of these pins on this side also have an onboard LED, <coughs> which will light up or not light up depending on what the state of that. Um, that pin is so whether it's an output or an input um, it'll it'll just detect that and it'll show you those so it means you've got um, a whole load of information as to what happening what's happening on all the pins that you're using down on this side okay. right so if we're going to do a, a UK Morris bot um, the first thing you need to do is then is just to sort out the the pin definitions so that they all match up with with what we want them to be um, on the device um, and so what I've done here is I've got just a couple of pages that, that give you um, the basic definitions um, that will set all this stuff up so that everything talks to the, the right bits on the UK Mars um, <clears throat> so basically um, so we're setting up the LED pin um, we've got the couple of sensor pins here. Um, we've got the trigger pin for the LEDs. Um, you've got your motor outputs. Um, if you want to play a tune, that's your pizza, uh, pizza pin. Um, and then you've got your motor speed pins. Um, so these are your motor speed PWMs um, down here. And this is your motor direction. Um, and then you can set your PWM frequency. Um, so you set that down there. Um, and note that your range on your PWM um, is not 0 to 255 as it is for the Arduino. It's 0 to 65,535. Um, there are a number of things like this. The ADC input and the PWM values, they're, they're different ranges to what you would use on the Arduino. But, um, you soon get used to sorting those out. Um, then your analog inputs, um, so that's saying, uh, telling you the pins for your analog inputs, your, your side sensors and your front sensors. Um, the button at the back, um, we can, uh, that's, that's there with, with a pull up, um, so that when you press the button, you can detect the button at the back. Um, the interesting thing is that um, the feed from the four-way switch and the button um, on a 
on a UK bar spot normally go to um, an analog pin um, so that you can read the different values. Um, obviously we don't have a spare analog pin to do that with um, so what we do is we set all the switches to on um, and then when you press the button um, basically it will go high or low um, and you can detect that on the digital input that that is now connected to. So although you've lost the, the four-way switch, um, you've still got a button here um, that you can use, but you've also got another button on the board itself and you can use both of those for um, setting um, what you want to do, what you want the, the device to do when it, when it goes up. Um, <clears throat> the, this board can handle interrupts and again um, I'll show you in a minute just um, uh, a bit about how you do the interrupt handling. Um, and so you've got your encoder pins here um, so we're just setting those up saying which pins those are. Um, <clears throat> that's your function switch digital input. Um, that as it says is the battery voltage but it's not connected because um, we didn't want to overdo it. Um, the device has got some NeoPixel RGB LEDs on it. Um, these are the commands that you would use in CircuitPython. Um, I haven't quite yet found the ones that you use in MicroPython um, to do the same. So these are just commented out. But it's just to tell you basically that um, you have got some RGB LEDs and when we find out if I work out um, what the command is to uh, use those, uh, <laughs> we can light those up as well. So yeah, so uh, again, just note, if you want to use the button on the PCB, um, set all the switches to on, and that will still read um, high or low as a digital input instead. Okay. Um, right, so if you're going to write your program, um, basically, the imports you're going to need um, are basically PIN definitions, ADC definitions in your PWM, um, NeoPixel if you want to get your RGB uh, things working and time um, so that you can measure, measure times and things. Um, <clears throat> and then put the PIN assignments as shown on the, the previous two screens that we've, we've just shown you. So you've got all of those. Um, and then basically um, as Rob showed, what you tend to do is you write a series of procedures um, which are defined like this um, and then write your bit of code that then calls one or more of those procedures. Um, pretty straightforward really. Save the program to the main the board with the name main.py um, or code.py if you're using CircuitPython um, and that will run automatically when, when you power it up the board or press the button. Um, right, I have got some line follower code so if you want to just see a bit more um, I've sort of just juggled it around to get a bit of it on the screen um, but this is a chunk of um, just school line follower code so we've got some global definitions down here we've got our pin definitions uh, going down through here right now down through to the um, analog inputs um, what else we've got we've got uh, defining the press button switch there um, those are your encoder pins defined um, it's basically all just sort of definition as to what all the pins are, are, are going to do and what you're going to call them. Um, and then basically, let's have a look, uh, switch on LEDs on the sensor board. Um, yeah, so basically this is setting, um, uh, let's have a look, what's that doing? Left side sense read. Oh yeah, it's reading the sensors basically there. Um, Oh yeah, ah, right, sorry, I didn't see the definition there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so here's a little photo read routine. So if you call that, 
that will just read the sensors and put them into these four variables. Um, here's a photo test routine that just calls that one, uh, which basically says go round, read the, uh, the sensors, print them out, and then um, wait for a little while. Um, and again, these are the sort of values that well, I get on black and white. Um, 4,500 for white and 55,000. Uh, again, it's a, a 0 to 65,000 is the range that you get back from the, from the ADC. Um, so switch read routine, switch test routine. Okay. Um, right, now I've got some bits here. Um, on this one, um, I've had a couple of options. Um, to decide what you're going to run, um, I press the switch, and each time I press the switch, it lights up the three LEDs that we've got on the board as a binary sequence so that I can select um, programs uh, 0 to 7. And then having got to the one that I want to run, I can then press the button on the board itself, and that will then run um, the program. Um, another way of doing that, that I did earlier um, was to actually just use the encoders. Um, I, I've done this this way because we don't use encoders on all the school um, robots. Um, but previously, um, I did just use the encoder on here, um, and I divided the encoder counts coming back by eight so that it wasn't too sensitive. And as you turn that, it just cycled through the programs that you want to try. And then again, you press the button on there and it runs that program. Um, this stuff here basically is just um, sorting out how you take the counted pins and display the, um, the bits in on the, the various LEDs. Um, so that, that's, that's this bit. This is the encoder read. Um, so what this is doing, so it says read the left encoder value um, one, read uh, left encoder, two, read the right one, and read the left one. And then I've got an encoder test here, basically, which says uh, read the encoders and print out the counts and just go around so that you can see that your, your encoders are working all right. Um, Encoder display. This is when I was using the bit that says use the encoders to select your program. Um, so you get this stuff down here, which takes you all down here. Oh yeah, and that uses the count facility. So this is just a, a thing that, um, oh yeah, this is the bit that's actually counting the um, interrupts that are coming back um, from uh, the encoders. So this is counting the, the left encoder, and this one's counting the, um, the right encoder. Um, and then I've got a bit of line following code here. Um, so basically, I'm setting up uh, some speed. I'm doing some adjustments. Then basically, the main loop here, reading the sensors. Um, <coughs> if it's less than 10,000, indicate whether you're seeing a, uh, a thing on the sensor or not. Um, let's have a look. That's, yeah, so that's basically... Yes, yeah, that's just switching the, the LEDs on to say whether you're, you're detecting a, a, a line there. Um, uh, over here, oh yes, we've got a bit here that basically says if um, both of these are seeing black, you've gone off the line, so um, um, you'll do something to set um, an adjustment um, to bring you back on the line. Um, if not, if so, if you haven't gone off the line, um, then you've got some proportional control, so the adjustment that we're going to make is uh, just on the sensor difference between the two front sensors here. Um, if it's if the left one's bigger than the right one, then, then we're, on the, we're on one side. Um, if it's the other way around, we're, we're slightly on the other side. Um, 
and then we've got the usual, we've got some D terms and stuff like that. And then we basically uh, modify the uh, left speed by the, the base speed plus um, or minus the adjustment here. We check the speed uh, just to make sure that we haven't um, put the speed greater than 65,000 or gone negative. Um, and then we set the duty cycle um, into the motor. So this actually sends the, um, the speed to the motors. Um, and then previous diff is just to use so that the um, uh, D term can be calculated. Um, that check speed is again just checking we haven't gone out of, uh, out of the ranges that we want to use. Um, and then so up to all that lot was basically definitions of um, pins and things and then definitions of procedures. Um, and then uh, the actual bit of code um, that runs. Uh, so we're switching on an LED, we're switching on some uh, the other LEDs, we're setting the motor direction. Um, this is to do with tunes and um, uh, color LEDs. Um, we <coughs> play a beep for half a second, um, then we set uh, the duty cycle to zero, so we're making sure the motors have stopped um, uh, initially. Um, we reset the encoder counts. Um, uh, what else we do? Number. Last few bits. Oh yeah, Con this is important. Configure the IRQ callback. So this basically, um, the, the lambda p left count, um, that's the bit that says uh, when you get uh, a thing back from the encoders, um, an interrupt from the encoders, execute the left count or the right count um, procedure which basically just says add one to the counts for those. Um, and then we'll, here we're just uh, basically waiting for the onboard button to be pressed um, while setting it to check button. Okay, yes. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, and then pretty much here, um, if it's program zero, we do a wide line follow. If it's one, it's do a photo test. If it's two, do an encoder test and, and so on. Um, and I had a bit more code at the end and I can't remember what that was there for, but it was probably a bit of spurious code that was just left at the end. So I, I just left it. Um, right, so, um, so if you want to do some line following or some wall following with one of these in Python, um, that will give you a really good start. Um, just copy the stuff off the slides, put it into your thing, sort out any indentation and any lines that have rolled over onto the next line and straighten those out. Um, don't use PowerPoint as your text. You? <laughs> no, no, don't use PowerPoint as your text. I mean, I can, uh, I can provide, I can send you a, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'll send you the, the, the source file for that as well, so um, that's fine. Um, and, and again, just as a, a, a final thing, I've got a couple of slides here. Um, <clears throat> when the board comes, as I say, it comes with this program that, that flashes the lights and rings the bells and does all the bits and pieces. Um, <clears throat> and this is actually the, the code that comes on the board um, when you buy it. Um, uh, and again, it's in circuit size circuit Python syntax. Again, I won't go through all of that, but um, it's just to, to say that's, that's what you're going to find. If you want to look at some circuit Python as an example, um, that's there as well. Okay, um, as I say, it's there. Anybody wants to look at it at any time during the day, it literally plugs in the physical changes, take about 10 minutes to make. Um, and the biggest thing really is just um, downloading MicroPython um, to replace CircuitPython on the board. Um, and you're away. Mm. Piece of cake. Lots of blue lights, so it must be good. Yep, yeah, yeah, look. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, I don't know if you can see when I turn the wheel, some of those blue lights mm. are the encoder inputs, and you can actually see the encoder pulses coming through um, on the blue LEDs.
So, um, presumably, if you, I mean, that looks like a particularly handy ball, not the least because for its spin compatibility. Yeah. But if you wanted to use another one, um, presumably the version of MicroPython that you download is kind of target specific because it's got definitions that you're already in. So, <coughs> so you, you could use that, or you could just use it as a, as a, as a just use a standard version of like PK. So then there is a generic RP2040 MicroPython image that you can put yeah. on almost any RP2040. Yeah. yeah, the problem is, and again, I did this the first week that the Pico came out, is that the Pico has got one pin wider spacing than this, so you have to end up with an adapter board um, to get the thing to fit. Um, and and it, it overlaps into where the motor is, and oh, it's all it sorts of... It's like a really nice board. I've changed my mind. Yeah. I want to play with the RP2040. It's, oh. it's a really nice board, really easy. Know. About eight quid. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Pico only has a couple of um, eight of these as well. It's got four. Yeah. It's got four, yeah. four eight of these, but one of them is dedicated to yeah. the onboard power supply. Right. Okay. So so but so but, but not on this one. So you this. Got, you've got to pick yeah. the three snare on this one. Yeah. yeah. But the, you got, but you've got <coughs> all four. On you get all four yeah. on this board. Which is, which is, useful, a, yeah. which is more useful than the Pico, where you've only got three available. I mean, I've done something very similar, very similar modification required for the uh, Arduino RP2040 Connect. Board. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's basically got, it has actually got eight ADC channels. It's yeah. got four Pico ones, right. plus the one four on another chip. Yeah. The, the two of them are a bit funny because they've got odd pull-ups on, and two of them, the other two have got different ranges. Is that in the Wi-Fi? It's yeah. in the Wi-Fi yeah. chip, and it's got the Wi-Fi and the, the solarometer and things mm. like that. So it's quite a nice, and that's compatible in the same way. Who's is that chip? Who's is that board? It's not Arduino board. Um, it's the new Arduino RP2040. It's fully supported by the Arduino yeah. ID, which is quite nice. Yeah. 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 The only additional problem I had with it is that because the way the um, GPO lines are mapped for the Yuka Mars board, um, the same PW, uh, PWM channel goes to both motors. So I've had to swap a couple of pins to stop that happening. That's a yeah. bit crazy from the, the Arduino people. So it's kind of yeah. the, well, the problem is that yeah. the RP2040 only has 16 PWM channels and they're hardwired to either the first 16 GPIO or the second bank. If you're not using the PIO, you could use the PIO. <coughs> GPIO. No, 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 no. But yeah. as, well as, the, as well as the PWM, yeah. you, could, you could also use yeah, yeah. Um, the thing about this is it's really simple. Let's say it's it's a ten minute hack on the board. Yeah. Um, I was going to comment about the hack. Yeah. Um, is that if you're going to take a bare UK Mars board and use it for this, oh. put a seven four inch C. Oh yeah. 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 Work. It does work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, 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 I would agree with that. That is a good point. If if you're building a a new board, but yeah, but it does actually work. Um, and as I say, you can. Uh, I'd like to do a UK mark, And you can see from the little lights that it does work. <laughs> <laughs>